Hi guys, welcome back to Kids Church Online. My name is Ellen and this week I've really been enjoying the lovely sunshine that we've been having. Today we're going to learn about how as children of God we follow God's instructions so that people will know that we know and love Jesus. We're going to hear about that in a little bit but first jump up and sing with us while the Kids Church Band plays. Jumping all over the place, a great big smile on my face, lifting my hands to the sky, and here's the reason why. Lost, now I'm found, going wrong, you turned me around, I was bad, feeling sad, but you came and held my hand. I took the blame, called my name, now I'll never be the same. On the cross, died in my place, now that's real amazing, real amazing, real amazing grace. Jumping all over the place, na na na, ooh na na na, ooh na na na, great big smile on my face, na na na, ooh na na na, ooh na na na, your amazing grace, na na na, ooh. over the place, na na na, ooh na na na, ooh na na na, I was lost, now I'm found, going wrong, you turned me around, I was bad, I'm feeling sad, but you came and held my hand, I took the blame, and called my name, now I'll never be the same, on the cross, died in my place, now that's real amazing, real amazing, real amazing grace. Jumping all over the place. Na na na, ooh na na na, ooh na na na. Great amazing grace. Na na na, ooh na na na, ooh na na na. Great big smile on my face. Na na na, ooh na na na, ooh na na na. Jumping all over the place. Na na na, ooh na na na, ooh na na na. Watch the other side. Going wrong, you turned me round. I was bad, feeling sad, but you came and held my hand. I took the blame, called my name. Now I'll never be the same. On the cross, died in my place. Now that's real amazing, real amazing, real amazing grace. Real amazing, real amazing, real amazing grace. Jumping all over the place, na na na, ooh na na na, ooh na na na. Great big smile on my face, na na na, ooh na na na, ooh na na na. Your amazing grace, na na na, ooh na na na, ooh na na na. Jumping all over the place, na na na, ooh na na na, ooh na na na. Your amazing grace. Jesus, he's a death crusher. 
today 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 13 to 18 if you are always trying to do good no one can really harm you but you may suffer for doing right if that happens you have God's blessing don't be afraid of the people who make you suffer don't be worried but keep the Lord Christ holy in your hearts always be ready to answer everyone who asks you to explain about the hope you have but answer them in a gentle way with respect keep all your conscience clear then people will see the good way you live as followers of christ and those who say bad things about you will be ashamed of what they said it is better to suffer for doing good than for doing wrong yes it is better if that is what god wants christ himself suffered when he died for you and with that one death he paid for your sins he was not guilty but he died for people who are guilty he did this to bring all of you to god in his physical form he was killed but he was made alive by the spirit hey guys welcome back to kids church online it's so good to see you all again today i've been trying to complete some activities but I'm not having much luck. So I have some instructions and I'm gonna need your help to make sure that I follow them very, very carefully. Do you reckon you can help me? Oh, great. I'm trying to paint a picture, but I'm not quite sure how to. Does anyone really enjoy painting or know how to paint? Okay, well, even if not, I think you can help me follow these instructions very, very carefully. Okay, the instructions say, step one, to pick up our paintbrush and have a piece of paper ready. Done. Okay, step two, take the paintbrush and dip it in the paint. I've got some cool purple paint here. Okay, step three, paint. But I'm not quite sure what I'm meant to be painting or how I'm meant to be painting. Should I paint my hand? Is that how you're meant to do it? Or should I paint on the floor? Oh no, my mum would not like that. Well then what am I meant to be doing? Oh, I'm meant to use the paint on the paper? Oh, that's what the paper's for. Thanks guys. You were much more helpful than those instructions. See, those instructions weren't clear, so I didn't know what to do. Okay. Finally, you're gonna to have to help me with something really, really tricky. Okay, finally, I'm gonna learn how to juggle. Now this seems a bit tricky, but I have the instructions and we should be okay. Can anyone juggle? Yeah, well, even if you can't, you can still help me follow the instructions. Okay, step one says that you need to have three balls. Okay, step two says to juggle. But how am I meant to juggle if I don't know how to juggle? Maybe I just throw one of the balls? That seems pretty easy. 
but that doesn't look quite right. Maybe I throw them at alternating rates, or maybe I just throw all three in the air and hope for the best. Thanks for all your help. You guys were really helpful, but those instructions may be not as helpful. See, instructions are a how-to guide that show us how to perform a certain activity. But for them to be good instructions, they need to be clear and simple. See, God actually left us an instruction list too. If we open our Bibles up to 1 Peter 3, we can see that Peter gives us a how-to guide on how to be a Christian. Let's break it down. Peter says step one is to love each other like brothers and sisters. In verse eight, we learn that we need to love one another just like a brother and a sister. Now, does anyone have a brother or a sister? I have one of each and I think you would agree with me that sometimes it's hard to love them either when they're being annoying or being mean. But the thing with our brothers and sisters is that at the end of the day, we love them deeply because they are our siblings. So as Christians, we're to love just as we would love our siblings. And we're to do it even though it might not always be easy. Step two is to be kind and humble. Does anyone actually know what that means? See, in verse eight, we hear that we must be compassionate and humble. But what that actually means is to think of others before ourselves. So being humble means that you do things out of the kindness of your heart without the expectation of anything in return, even gratitude. See, God calls us to be kind and humble to others because Jesus was the perfect example of this first. Step three, don't do wrong to anyone to pay them back for them doing wrong to you. Or don't insult anyone to pay them back for insulting you. Let me ask you, have you ever had someone call you a name or say something rude to you? When that happens, our first reaction is to be mean back. We retaliate because it feels fair that if someone's mean to you, you should be allowed to be mean back. But that's not part of God's instructions for us. In verse 9, it says, Do not do wrong to anyone or pay them back for doing wrong to you. Or do not insult anyone to pay them back for insulting you. But God asks us to bless them because we've received a blessing. Step four, avoid saying anything hurtful and never let a lie come out of your mouth. Okay, fun fact. Did you know that the average person says 7,000 words a day? That's a lot of words. Think about what that means to you. Those 7,000 words at least that you speak each day are how you connect with the people around you. They let others know if you're happy or hungry, sad or frustrated, or perhaps even excited. Peter reminds us in verse 10 that if we want to live the good life as a Christian, we should never let anything hurtful be said or never let a lie come out of our mouths. But why should we do this? Well, that takes us to step number five. Stop doing what is wrong and do what is good. When we do good things, like using our kind words instead of hurtful words, we're not doing it for us, but we do this to respect God and give him the praise he deserves. If we stop doing the wrong things, like Peter tells us to do in verse 11, then through our actions, people can know whose instructions we follow. Okay, and finally, step six. Look for peace and do all you can to help people live peacefully. See, it's an interesting concept piece. When we look for peace, we turn away from being selfish and self-centered and instead look to build each other up. As Christians, we should be living such peaceful lives that the people around us notice. Okay, let's recap so we don't forget any of those instructions. Step one was to love each other like brothers and sisters. Step two was to be kind and humble. Step three, don't do wrong to anyone to pay them back for doing wrong to you. Or don't insult anyone to pay them back for insulting you. Step four, avoid saying anything hurtful 
and never let a lie come out of your mouth. Step five, stop doing what is wrong and do good. Step six, look for peace and do all you can to help people live peacefully. But these instructions that God gives us don't just apply when things are easy. See, we're meant to follow them all the time. When times get hard, we become selfish and forget to love one another. Instead, Peter is telling us that we should love instead of hate. You know, I can think of someone else who suffered and chose to respond in love when a lot of people chose to hate him. Can you guess who I'm thinking of? Ah, uh, that's right. It was Jesus. In verse 18, we learn that Jesus suffered for our sins so that we can have a relationship with God. By doing this, he replaced the hate that was thrown at him with the ultimate act of love. Through these instructions that God gives us in the book of 1 Peter chapter 3, we can see that God shows us how simply and clearly we can live the Christian life. By just obeying and following his instructions, we can live the good life as Christians. I'm going to pray for us now. Dear God, thank you that you sent your son to die on the cross for us. Lord, by dying on the cross, he took away the sins of the world so that we could have a relationship with you. And by doing so, he replaced the hate with love. Help us to follow your instructions, even when it's hard or even when we feel like we can't. Amen. Hi, I'm Lucy. I'll be leading you in prayer. Dear God, after all the blessings you've given us, all we give you back is sin. You sent your own son down from heaven to cure the deadly curse of sin so that we would not carry the weight of sin on our shoulders. You sent down your son to suffer what we should be suffering. We thank you for all that you have done throughout the years and from what you did, we can turn over a new life like you turn over a page in a book. We thank you for all you have done. Amen.
Wow, wasn't that fun? It was really good to get to pray for our teachers and our schools and learn a little bit more about how we can be living for Jesus throughout the week. I'm going to be thinking and praying about that this week and learning more about how I can live so that people know that I love Jesus. We hope you guys have a lovely week. Thanks for coming to Kids Church Online and we hope we see you next week. Bye! Whoa, whoa, whoa.